In this Excel tutorial, we'll learn how to visualize evidence of adverse or disparate impact or the lack thereof using Excel and specifically using bar charts or bar plots as they're sometimes called. So to get started, here's the data file that we're working with, the sample data here. You can see that there are three fields or three columns or three variables here that we're going to be working with. The first one is a unique identifier variable. Let's assume that, the, that we're working with a sample of applicants who are going through a selection process here. And so these applicants, they all have unique applicant identifier numbers. And so here they're conveniently numbered one through 274, so sequentially. And there just so happens to be 274 applicants in this sample here. Now the second variable here is cognitive underscore test. And this, this is a variable that contains um, pass or fail scores for people who took a cognitive ability test as part of a selection procedure. And so the way that you read this is each row represents a unique applicant here. So this is applicant with unique identifier number one, and it appears that they passed this cognitive ability test as part of the selection process. Now let's assume for the third variable here that this is their gender identity as represented by the, the word gender here with the capital G. And you'll see that they self-reported their gender and there's two levels that people self-reported in the data, man and woman there. Okay, so our, here are our three variables. Now, what we wanna do to get things kicked off here is that, well, first we would wanna make sure that before we do any kind of data visualization like this, to look at evidence of disparate or adverse impact um, from an employment perspective, we'd want to make sure that we have actually run, if we're in the United States, the four-fifths rule test, as well as an accompanying statistical test like the chi-square test of independence, for example, um, or the Fisher exact test or any other test that um, is recommended by the courts uh, and the uniform guidelines and the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. Again, specific to the United States here. But let's assume that we already did that and we do know that, well, we didn't find a evidence of adverse or disparate impact here. Um, we are going to still create a data visualization. You still might decide to do that under certain contexts, but I will want to preface the rest of this tutorial by saying that always think very critically about whether a data visualization that you're creating is going to help your storytelling process and make it clearer and easier to communi communicate accurate yet compelling findings, or if it's going to confuse people, create um, especially people who only look at the data visualization and don't read or listen to the part that has to do about the statistical test that you might have run beforehand that informed the data visualization and how you designed it. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna create a contingency table. And so these first steps will mirror what you would do prior to calculating or um, the, the selection ratios um, and the impact ratio in order to run the four-fifths rule, as well as what you would do to actually do a chi-square test of independence in Excel as well. So we're gonna create a contingency table, which is sometimes called a cross-tabulation table. And the way that we're going to do that is we're gonna select all the data and their headers there, which corresponds to the names of the variables. And we're gonna create a pivot table. So let's go to insert here in Excel, click on the pivot table icon, and we've already selected a range or a table there. Let's just use the default, a new worksheet here. So we'll create a new worksheet that will have our pivot table and all of our work here today. Click OK. All right, so now we have a new window where we can start working on our pivot table here. Make this a little bit larger there. All right, so how are we gonna set up this, this uh, pivot table that ultimately becomes our contingency table? Well, let's make the rows gender, so levels of gender, which in this case happens to be man and woman. So this is a categorical or dichotomous or nominal variable if we're talking about the measurement scale here. And then cognitive test is gonna be our columns in our con contingency table or cross tabulation here. And it's also dichotomous, nominal and categorical in terms of measurement scale because there's just two levels here that are non-numeric, which are fail versus pass here. And then how are we going to populate this table? Well, let's drag the ID variable, which is the unique identifier variable down to the values box here, to the values field. And you'll see by default, it does the sum and remember the ID variable, although it's numeric, one through 274, it's really nonsense. It has no inherent meaning. It's just a unique identifier for people. And so let's change this by go, clicking on the little down arrow there next to sum of ID. And let's click on the option value field settings here. 
And so the default is sum. Let's change that to count or frequency, as it's sometimes called, and click OK. All right, so now we're talking. Now we're talking about something that looks a little bit more informative here, OK? And so we can, if we want, we could switch around things here where we, um, in terms of the order of the columns or the rows and so forth. And so how you would do that, you could do a sort here. So it's currently sorted in alphabetical order where fail comes before pass in terms of the columns because it's F before P. Um, if we do sort Z to A, it'll switch these around. Um, sometimes I prefer the pass column to be first, sometimes I prefer it to be uh, second or last. Um, let's just keep it this way for now. So I switched it so the pass column is first here, okay? All right, so what is the next thing that we're going to do? Well, let's copy, highlight and select and copy that portion of the table there so that we can actually paste the raw values below, okay? And so I'm gonna paste down here a few rows lower. I'm gonna do a paste option, which is the just the values. I'm not pulling in any of the pivot table information here um, just to keep things simple. And I'm gonna clean this up a little bit by removing the row labels there. Um, title and just with all the margins and titles here, just putting those in bold font. And so that that reveals that in the middle here, these are our raw frequencies or counts that make up our contingency table, which again is sometimes called a cross tabulation. Okay. And so I'm going to add a label here. We're going to call this observed. So this is our observed table. And this will make more sense, especially if you're running a chi-square test of independence, because when we talk about chi-square test of independence, the formula behind the scenes that we're running involves looking at your observed counts or frequencies um, relative to your expected counts or frequencies if the two variables, categorical variables, were truly independent of each other, okay? So I'm also gonna just type in here in parentheses actual, just to remind us that we're talking about actual data here, okay? So what do we actually see here? Not what we would um, expect. All right, so now we have those data. Now we're ready to come over here. Let's make a little note to ourselves that I'm gonna be using this acronym or abbreviation, capital S, capital R, which is selection ratio. So I'm just gonna make a note there, okay? This could also be called in this context, uh, a pass ratio, a pass rate, or a selection rate. Okay, so the, the first thing I'm gonna do is um, type in some labels here. So let's do selection ratio for man here, or men. Okay, um, and colon, because I'll actually create those formulas to the right of that cell. And then I'll do the same thing for selection ratio, women, and then colon there. Okay, oops. All right, I'm gonna change those to bold font there. All right, so now we're ready to calculate the selection ratios. And this would be, again, the same steps that you would follow. You need to calculate the selection ratios before conducting and computing the four-fifths rule uh, and the impact ratio, okay? So how do we do this, calculate the selection ratio? Well, we do equal. It's just going to be the number of people who passed for men, for example. So here it's 70 men passed out of um, 160 total. So divided by the total number of men, which in this case, the row marginal sum here for men is 160. So there's 160 men in our sample 274, and that's just 70 plus 90 here. So 70 passed, 90 failed, 160 total. Okay, so divided by 160, hit return or enter. So our selection ratio for men is point, let's say 0.44 if we do some rounding. There are 44% of men who pass this, uh, this particular selection test, which is this cognitive ability test that I mentioned earlier. Half or 44% of those uh, men who took it actually passed it, okay? Let's do the same thing for women here. So equals, and let's grab the number of women, the count of women or the frequency of women who pass, which is 42 here divided by the total number of women, which is the row marginal here for women. It's 114, and we hit enter or return. We find that the selection ratio for women is about 0.37. So 37% of women who took this cognitive ability test passed it. All right, so now we have the building blocks for the bar chart. And so what we're gonna visualize is a bar chart where one bar is gonna be the selection ratio for men, and the other is the selection ratio for women. So this is a visual way to see, do these bars look similar in size or height or different? Okay, so let's highlight these four cells that have the labels here, the labels for the selection ratios and the selection ratios themselves. Let's go up to insert here, go up to the bar chart, column chart, if you will, 
um, icon here, click on the drop down. You'll see there's a 2D column. Generally, I'd advise staying away from three dimensional bar charts unless you truly are working with three dimensions of data. But even then, there's different ways you can do that with, uh, you can account for three dimensions using um, uh, using a, a legend or something like that. Okay, so let's click here on this first option. All right, so now we have our chart here, our bar chart, and we can start tweaking things here, okay? So as you can see, we've got our selection ratio columns, one for men, one for women here. You can also see that this y-axis right here, this is the selection ratio or just a proportion here. So the proportion of men who passed is the selection ratio, proportion of women who pass is the selection ratio. Um, I tend to not like to put chart titles above unless it's gonna be truly standalone and you're just handing out a flyer or something. Um, with this chart. Otherwise, usually there's gonna be some context. It'll be on a slide, in a presentation, or it'll be in a document with accompanying text or a, a figure um, title below it. So I'm going to click on this just to select it and hit delete to remove it, okay? All right, so another thing that you might consider too, um, I don't think in this particular context, these grid lines here, so I'll just click on the grid lines to highlight them. So you see the blue dots here. I don't think they're adding anything. I think they're actually leading to what is often called chart junk. Um, they're not, I think, informing anybody's decision here about whether these two bars are different sizes. We're not really interested in the exact difference between these two selection ratios here. So now that they're, these are selected and highlighted, I'm just gonna click delete to get rid of those as well. Okay, so that cleans things up a little bit here. Okay, so what is the next thing that I'm gonna do? Well, I would like to add in some titles here. I think this is appearing over here. There we go. I would like to add in some axis labels and axle axis titles is another way of saying that. So for the Y axis and the X axis. So if you click on this little plus sign here, you get your chart elements and you can add and remove things fairly easily. One of the options is axis titles here. Let's click on that, check that box there. And so you get your default axis title here and you can just double click on either one of these and both of them, if you like, and rename them. So for the y-axis, I'm gonna call this selection ratio and in parentheses put pass rate as that's also another way of thinking about what these represent here for this, the cognitive ability test, okay? And for the x-axis here, I'm gonna put gender because that is the variable here we're talking about for the x-axis is men and women here. So their gender identities. All right, so now we've switched those things. Now it's a little bit more informative and you can do some stylistic things if you select both of these, for example, um, and you can actually make these bold if you'd like, if you think that would look better. You can change the font and there's different, I'm using hotkeys or shortcuts right now, but you could just click on the icons here, whatever's easiest for you or whatever makes the most sense. All right, so what's the next thing that we can work on? Well, let's look at the y-axis scaling here, okay? So notice that the lowest limit here by default is about 0.32, the upper is 0.46. This makes it look like there's a big difference here. But as I mentioned earlier, if you were to actually run the four-fifths rule and to do follow-up statistical tests like the chi-square test of independence, you'd find that there's actually not a significant difference or there's not really a difference um, we would consider that's substantive between the selection ratio for women relative to the selection ratio of men. So that impact ratio, and if you wanted to calculate the impact ratio, it is simply the selection ratio of our focal group, which tends to be the selection ratio of the group that has the lower selection ratio, which is women here, divided by the selection ratio for the referent group or the comparison group, which has the higher selection ratio. Hit enter return. Impact ratio is 0.84. This would exceed the four fifths rule, meaning it's above 0.8 and therefore we would conclude that there's not evidence of um, disparate or adverse impact according to that rule. All right, so for that reason, let's change the scaling here to make it so that it doesn't look like there's a huge difference here because this is just really a scaling effect here. It's, it's blowing up this difference. And so you can double click here. So select this, Let's see if I can get this here. And actually, let's just go over here. And so now that we've got it selected, you'll see the format axis panel is open here. And you'll see that you have the bounds, the minimum and maximum. That's what we want here, okay? This is another way of thinking of the limits here. Um, in this case, this is the y-axis limits. 
but they're calling it bounds in Excel. So what's the minimum? Well, the lowest possible um, selection ratio you could have is 0, 0.0, which would be zero people pass this particular selection procedure out of all those people who took it. And the highest possible, our maximum, we can make that 1.0, which would be 100% of the people who took this cognitive ability selection procedure or test actually passed it. So let's add those differences. Let's add that in there. And so now you can see that our axis here, our Y axis ranges from zero to one in terms of the selection ratio or pass rate. And so you can see that the discrepancy, at least visually speaking, is minimized here, which is more in line with the findings from our test, okay? And so the next thing that you would want, we could potentially do is let's, these categories, they're just referencing these cells here that we selected. Um, it might be confusing for people if they see SR men, SR women, and really what we just want is just men and women here under these columns in terms of the labels. So it's really easy to go and change that. So to do that, we would just go over here and just change the source. So this chart, remember we originally selected these four cells, it's just referencing those four cells. So that's where it pulled this information. So if we just change this to men and this to women, now in our chart, we see that update there, okay? Now, the last thing I wanna show you, to, um, which is by no means the last thing that you could do, but it's the last thing that we'll do in this tutorial, is let's look at how you could actually change the color here of just one of the bars. If you wanna create a visual difference here so that people can see that we're talking about um, two different subgroups here, men and women within the same protected class of gender here. Okay, let's just arbitrarily, let's double click here on men, on the column associated with men, the bar associated with men here, and let's change the color. And there's different ways you could do this. You could do a right click here, or you could come over here and change it, uh, the fill as well. Okay, so you can see the default is blue right there. We could change that. Let's just do a right click. If you have a Mac, this is gonna be a command click here. And if you click on this little icon right here with the paint, this is our fill paint, and you could change it to any color you want. I'll just select red here, okay? All right, so that is the, um, that is the bar chart. And with Excel, you can adjust kind of the dimensions and so forth by playing around with um, the, the size of it, depending on how you want it to fit. If you want it to be narrow bars, fatter bars, and so forth, um, these are all things that you can kind of um, uh, play around with there. And you can do a right click or command click if you have a Mac, if you wanna copy this and then paste it into a document or something like that. Uh, you could also do it the old fashioned way by coming up here and just copying, okay? And you could copy it as a picture too if you want to retain the properties. And one thing Excel will do is if you put it into another uh, Microsoft products like, like uh, PowerPoint or Word, you can actually keep it linked. So if the data get updated here, this, um, this table, wherever it lives, will get updated as long as there's still a way for them to communicate with each other um, through whatever type of, uh, if you're using the cloud or you're using um, your own computer, okay? All right, so this wraps up this tutorial, um, which again was on how do we visualize evidence or the lack thereof of disparate impact or adverse impact using a bar chart or bar plot in Excel.